Hello, welcome back to episode five. We're really getting somewhere now. Repointing, it's nice to be doing this job. I think this is actually my favorite job so far. I keep telling people that I'm repointing and I get a ooh, repointing. But I think that's because they've repointed bricks with cement, repointing stonework with lime mortar. Totally different kettle of fish. Really nice. Um, I think partly it's to do with the fact that I get to see the, the nice finished product at the end as well. Um, we did this building work a year ago now, so it's nice to see it actually finished with the uh, pointing. This isn't what it's going to look like when it's finished by the way. Uh, I've got to brush it down yeah, after this. It, uh, there's three stages to repointing. You've got to take the old mortar out, put the new mortar in and then brush it down. So taking it out, I found the best technique was uh, using my SDS drill with a, a chisel bit in it, just on hammer obviously. Um, and that, that worked well to get the majority out and then just follow that round with a, a hammer and chisel and then uh, a wire brush to clean it up and then the, the bits were rebuilt at the top the day after we re rebuilt it I went round and sc scraped out the, the uh, outside inch or two and then to do the repointing I'm using lime mortar obviously. I'm using a mix of uh, three sand, one lime and one lime dust which is just crushed up limestone basically um, and that gives it the the best uh, match to to what was there before and when you brush it down you get like little bits of stone and it gives it like a, a nice finish. Um, there's a few different techniques for for getting it in. Just chucking it in like that actually works quite well because it gets it right to the back. Um, some bigger bits as well you can just put it there and just push it all the load in. Well whatever you do just try and get it to the back so it gets a good purchase on the on the stone in there. And then I'll keep doing this, get the rest of this wall done and then come back tomorrow and we'll give it a brush down and I'll show you that part. next day and I've let this go off so it's it's almost gone off it's not turned white yet it's still got a little bit of like the the brownie color in it and it just brushes off nice now look if it's too wet it sticks all in your brush and you need to leave it a little bit longer but then if it's too dry and it's gone white then it doesn't brush off the same because it's gone off too hard but if it has done that, just water it with your watering can. It does bring it back a little bit. So I go around and just bring it all back level. Yep. The wire brush leaves little lines in it all over, so you get a, a firm normal brush and you can brush it again with that and that takes all the lines out then. I don't do it too much, I like to leave a little bit of the, uh, the working marks in there. But that just brings it back nice. Look at 
that. Beautiful. Also, I don't know if you can see this bit here, I had to leave. There's a caterpillar. I don't know what caterpillar it is, but it's... Well, yeah, this uh, caterpillar's really confused me because it's laid some eggs. Now, I don't know about you guys, but I always thought a caterpillar became a butterfly and then the butterfly laid the eggs that then became the caterpillar. It's like Pokemon, isn't it? But this caterpillar's laid eggs. So I'm going to find out what caterpillar it is and what's actually happening there. And I'll fill you in soon. But yeah, there's that bit I've just done lot, looking nice. And then here's some I did earlier. This is the finished colour look, and it's gone nice and white, and you can see all those little bits of stone in there, gives it a nice finish. So, you know how much I love a time lapse. I'm going to get the rest of it done, a little bit of a time lapse for you and then we'll come back for the next step. time lapses the mesmerizing aren't they so there we are look all nicely pointed I'll show you around this side grand job front looks lovely look at that it's like a different building isn't it and then, to finish it off, I've got the pièce de la résistance. Is these metal crosses. Now these were the, uh, the tie bars. It, we had a cross on this side and a bar going all the way through to a cross on the other side. It was just holding that building together because of the, the roof spread pushing the walls out. Well, because I've put that ridge beam in, in uh, episode 2 I think it was. Um, I'm just putting the crosses back up as decoration now, so I've, I've just cut a bit of the uh, end of the bar off and I'm going to just resin those in, so I've, I've drilled a hole there we'll get that stuck in. One look at this, all my cast iron gutterings arrived, so that'll be on next. So let's stick you here and we'll get those crosses on.
Presses back on, repointing done. It's looking like it used to again now, just better. So, um, found out about the uh, that caterpillar. Turns out it's a parasitic wasp that's done that. So the wasp lays its larvae in a host, usually a caterpillar, and then they live in that host for about 20 days, feeding off its blood and insides, but careful not to damage any vital organs. Uh, so it can keep eating and sustaining them while they get bigger and then when they're big enough they eat their way out of it and then the caterpillar actually wraps them up in its silk and looks after them and then dies it's crazy but they are good for the allotment parasitic wasps kill all your green fly and aphids and stuff so yeah that's the end of that episode if you want to subscribe, click this bit here. Um, if you want to check out the other Nettle Barn episodes, there's a, a playlist here that's got all the episodes in it, if you want to click that. Or the one on this side, I've put the, the building episode because I've referred to that a couple of times in this and if you're watching this, you might be interested in that. So, that's it. I'll see you next time. Sounds like I've got a delivery coming up here. What's this?